Debates can make a big difference. You're never going to have as many people watching your two candidates together in a presidential election as you're going to have on debate night. And the campaigns can't control the debate the way they control everything else. No matter what you do as a manager to get him ready for it, he's still got to step in the arena, and it's just two of them. And uh, you don't know. It's three agencies of government when I get there that are gone. Commerce, education, and the, uh, uh, what's the third one there? Let's see. <laughs> one brain freeze can end your campaign. Okay. Uh, the uh, <laughs> I, 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 commerce, and let's see. Rick Perry was a serious third, contender until this debate. Oops. Forgetting's bad and looking bad is bad. In the very first TV debate, Richard Nixon refused to put on makeup. It hurt him. Nixon later said, More important than what you say is how you look on television. And so campaigns obsess over details. When Ronald Reagan debated Walter Mondale, Rollins and Beckel were the opposing campaign managers. You remember the amount of time we spent debating the debate, all the logistics of it, how, t how high the podiums were going to be, how, how much far time? apart? Oh, it was time. days. Days. Days? Oh, yeah. We had, we had teams negotiating. Like, like how many time, where they are? Uh, Hope, you know, color of the room. room how high what the difference book? would it make to the candidate what color the room was? Because in certain conditions, in certain colors, work for certain candidates. Because Mondale was shorter than Reagan. We wanted more distance between the two podiums. I remember we debated between seven and a half feet and nine feet for it seemed like a day and a half. The first he, debate came and Reagan struggled. Two thirds of the defense budget pays for pay and salary, or pay and pension. He looked a little tired, he looked a little ragged. The general observation was that they just spent too much time with a 70-some-odd-year-old guy trying to beat every factoid that they could into his brain. People said, Reagan's too old for the office. You already are the oldest president in history. In the very next debate, Reagan was ready for that. I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. He delivers the line, and there's a impish sense of, you know, humor that comes out, and you see the little curl in his lips, and he's making fun of himself, but you know he's delivered a great line, and Mondale can't help himself. He is simultaneously laughing, and at the same time knowing, I have just been taken out to the cleaners. I turned to the guy next to me, who was my deputy, and said, this race is over. Just from that? Yeah, and I walked away. Didn't listen to the rest of it. Most people only remember one thing about the 1988 vice presidential debate, what Senator Lloyd Benson said when Dan Quayle compared his experience to JFK's. Senator, you're no Jack Kennedy. Years later in a debate, Al Gore walked up to Bush. So Al Gore tries to come over and be the bully and get in his face. You remember the moment, Bush doesn't say anything. He just looks at him, smiles, gives him the head wink, and goes on. And I believe I can. That was it. It just, it, you know, it, it just absolutely devastating to Gore. And you watch and go, yes. Yeah. We all revert to our junior high mentality, you know, when, when our team scores, yeah, you know. What most people don't know is that Bush had been prepared. Judd Gregg, who had played the role of Al Gore in the debate prep and had seen him pull this trick, so he had said to Bush, be prepared, he's going to come get in your face. And we all dismissed it at the time. But sure enough, it happened. Which raises the question, how do candidates prepare? These two debate coaches showed me. Mark McKinnon and Brett O'Donnell prepped President Bush for debates. O'Donnell later coached Mitt Romney and Michelle Bachmann. The coaches spend hours trying to replicate debate moments. You have the candidates stand in front of a podium like this as realistic as possible. Yeah. You want a, just a, a strong bearing, erect near the podium. Col look at Colin Powell. I mean, he, he, you know, he just commands a podium. It's like this. It's about, you know, making sure that you fill the stage more than your opponent does. The candidates practice debating stand-ins. For Obama, John Kerry's played Romney. Rob Portman plays Obama. You never see videotape of this. You don't even right. see pictures. No, there's, and there's a reason why. You don't, want, you don't want to show those vulnerable moments. We don't want to give away any component to our prep. In the 2000 campaign, one of McKinnon's secretaries gave Bush debate prep video to the Gore campaign. The Gore campaign very smartly went right to the FBI. And what happened to her? She went to prison for a year. What's so secret? 
I pretended to be a candidate. Clear and simple, limited government. You, you say limited government. Uh, what kind of limits are you talking about? Can you be specific about the cuts you're talking about? Yes, I can list cuts. Would you cut defense? I would cut defense. So you're soft on defense. I knew how I should answer the questions, but under pressure, it's hard. I'm just saying shrink it back to the Clinton days. Was that My instinct terrible? is to just answer the questions that are asked, but consultants say, don't. You're still answering my questions, but most of the time you want to be delivering your message. They say Sarah Palin was good at that. Governor Palin answered the questions in her debate on her terms. Governor Palin, is that so? Uh, that is not so, but because that's just a quick answer, I want to talk about, again, uh, my record on energy. She was able to pivot most of the questions onto ground that she was comfortable in handling the questions on. They kept grilling me. Do you believe college is stupid? I Don't you think that saying college is stupid is an irresponsible remark to make? No. For some people, college is stupid. You just gave them some tape. Now they're going to make a commercial of you saying college is stupid. Don't vote for Stas. He says college is stupid. College is stupid. Stas. Bad for our kids. Bad for America. Knowing that one bad debate moment can wreck your campaign makes candidates very careful. When Gerald Ford debated Jimmy Carter, there was a technical glitch. The pool broadcasters from Philadelphia have temporarily lost the audio. Instead of leaving the stage to take a break, neither candidate moved. David, we don't know what's happened. Uh, we're as much surprised by what's going on as you are. Since one wasn't going to budge, the other didn't budge. So they stood there like mannequins for almost half an hour. The ultimate fear is making a mistake or, or that the other guy's going to look better, so they were frozen. The first President Bush was criticized for looking at his watch too much during a debate. He looked at his watch, so what? It's a nonverbal clue that says, I'm, I want to get away from this situation as fast as possible. And that hurt him. He was widely viewed as losing that debate. It overran the message. Al Gore was criticized after this debate for sighing while George Bush spoke. In Alaska, there's a lot of shut-in gas. State of Texas, that's what a governor gets. This is a major problem, Social Security. And he looked like a doofus. He was castigated for this debate performance as a result. The next debate, Al Gore went the opposite direction and went out of his way to be docile and agreed with virtually everything Bush said. The governor and I agree. I agree with Governor Bush, and I basically agree with Dick Cheney. Embarrassing episodes like those are why candidates practice a lot. These discussions go on for how long? Hours. For most candidates, it is the most hated part of the campaign. Does the candidate ever get mad? Oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's painful. It's not fun. The candidates ever yell at you? Yell, ever? collapse, <laughs> walk out. But they all do it because practice builds confidence. And the no. confident guy wins, not the guy who has the better answer. Quite often, yeah.